Welcome to the Professional Installer's Guide to Installing Heat Weave Warm Wire. You can install warm wire in new construction or remodeling. It can be installed over concrete, cement backer board, or even plywood. Almost any kind of floor covering can be used, including carpet, laminate, tile, or stone. The installation we're featuring looks like this. Warm wire is installed over cement backer board in thin set mortar and then covered with ceramic tile. The power lead goes up the wall to an electrical box where you'll locate the floor sensing control. 120 volt power comes from the circuit box or an existing circuit to the control. A sensor wire runs from the control to the floor. Each reel of warm wire is built with a single heating element wire and a 10-foot power lead. The metal braided power lead is the only connection you make to the power source. At one end you'll find three exposed wires color-coded for proper connection to your power supply. Sold separately is this floor strap used to secure the wire to the floor. Each reel is 25 feet long which covers approximately 50 square feet of installed product. You'll also need a floor sensing control like this Sunstat programmable model with a seven-day schedule to maintain the temperature that's right for you. Each control uses a sensor like this, which is embedded in your floor to sense the floor temperature. Here are some of the tools and materials for your installation. Electrical installers will need a single gang extra deep electrical box, 12 or 14 gauge electrical wiring cable depending on your local code, drywall saw, a nail guard to protect the power leads at the base plate, a 15 or 20 amp circuit breaker if you get power from a circuit box, a digital multimeter with a range of 20,000 ohms, a fish tape, a loudmouth monitor, and assorted hand tools. If you have one or two spools, the single gang extra deep box works fine. If you have more than two spools, we recommend a 2 and 1 8 inch deep 4 inch box with a mud ring sized to the depth of your drywall. Or use the four inch square box as a junction box with a cover plate and use the single gang box for your control. Flooring installers will need latex or polymer modified thin set mortar or self leveling compound, a square notch trowel like this cable trowel, hot glue gun, hammer and wood chisel, tape measure, 3M90 adhesive, metal shears, screw gun, and screws. Before getting started, pay attention to these precautions. Don't install warm wire under flooring without first embedding it in a layer of mortar. Don't embed warm wire in glues, caulks, or adhesives. Always use a latex or polymer modified thin set mortar to completely embed the heating elements and factory connection. Don't ever cut the silver heating wire for any reason and be careful not to damage it with the edge of your trowel. Don't attempt to repair the heating wire. Instead, call toll free at 800-276-2419 for instructions. Don't install one wire on top of another. This will cause dangerous overheating. Don't forget to install the floor sensor. Don't install warm wire under cabinets, built-ins, or walls. Excessive heat will build up under these features. Don't remove the nameplate UL label at the end of the mat. Your installation must be protected by a ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI. Heat weave controls already have GFCI in them. Otherwise, you must use a GFCI type circuit breaker at your panel. The first step is to use a good quality digital multimeter to check the performance of both the cable and sensor wire. Look for models that measure up to 20,000 ohms. Ohms are represented by the omega symbol. If your test leads are not attached to the meter, insert the red lead into the omega jack and the black lead into the com jack. Set the scale to a low setting, like 200 ohms. Make sure the leads are not attached to any power supply or to other cables. Here we are using the 120 volt version. At the end of the power lead, you'll find three exposed wires. The white neutral wire, the black hot wire, 
and the green ground wire. Hold either the red or black test leads to either the white or black wires and note the value shown on the meter. Make sure this number falls within the resistance range printed on the label of each cable. Next, touch the meter leads to the white and green wires and then the black and green wires. The display should not change. Conduct these tests when you take the spool from the box, after the wire is fastened to the floor, and after the finished floor covering is complete. Write down your readings in your manual's resistance log. Don't forget to check your floor sensor before installation. Set the scale to 20,000 ohms, which is shown here as 20K. Hold the test leads to the sensor wires and compare the value to this chart. A reading of 10.96 means the sensor shows the room temperature to be just below 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what our thermometer says, so the sensor is functioning properly. To continuously monitor your system during installation, we recommend you use a loudmouth. A loudmouth alerts you if a wire has been damaged or broken. It should be used along with a digital ohm meter. First, open the battery compartment and connect the included 9-volt battery. Replace the cover and turn the unit on. The alarm should sound and the red light should turn on. If not, inspect the battery connection or replace the battery. During normal use, the green light indicates that the loudmouth is operational, monitoring your heating elements for damage. If the green light goes out, replace the battery. Next, make sure the power leads and the loudmouth are not connected to any power source. If you are testing a single 120 volt radiant cable, locate the colored wires in the power lead. Insert the black and the white wire into either the L1 or L2 terminals. Either one is okay. Tighten the green copper ground wire into the G or ground terminal. Hang the loudmouth in a convenient location with the monitor switched on and the green light showing. If the red light and alarm come on, stop work and locate the damage to the heating elements. Pull the damaged wire free from the thin set and clean off four to five inches on each side of the damage. Call 800-276-2419 for instructions. Refer to the DVD Extras menu for tips on connecting two or three spools to the loudmouth if needed. First, locate the control on an interior wall away from direct sunlight and other heat sources. Make sure the power lead will reach the control. If not, think about where you can locate a junction box in a wall or under the floor so your power leads can connect to the Romex that goes back to your control location. Don't forget a cover plate. Next, clean the floor thoroughly to remove debris and dust. Heat loss through a concrete subfloor can lead to system underperformance. This can be remedied by using an insulating underlayment, such as foam or cork. You can vary the cable spacing depending on the heating load. 2-inch spacing is for rooms with lots of heat loss, like basement floors and sunrooms. Use 2.5-inch spacing for baths and most rooms. 3-inch spacing is more common in hallways and rooms with low heat loss. For help sizing your warm wire system, call your distributor, go to our website, or refer to your manual. The straps need to be installed to let the wire flow from one section to another. Refer to the back of the manual to help you visualize this. If you're doing a large room with one spool, your best strategy is to go to the far end of the room and work your way back. In our case, we'll put a 100-foot spool on the left side of the room and a 30-foot spool on the right side of the room. Measure from the wall 4 inches and mark this area as a no heat zone. At entryways and kick spaces, however, Put warm wire up to the wall to heat the area where people will be standing. Use your metal shears to cut the straps to fit the perimeter of each area. Remember to point the tabs toward the wall or the outer edge. In the larger areas, we're installing the strap between perimeters to hold the wire in place. 
This is a good idea when distances between straps exceed 4 feet. Turn the strap over and position it just below the line where it will be installed. Spray the back with adhesive. Notice that the overspray covers the original line. Let the adhesive dry until it's tacky. Press it in place where you see your floor marks and the overspray. Instead of adhesive, you can also use short screws or roofing nails to hold the strap in place. Once you've checked the labels, tested the heating elements, and set up the loudmouth, you're ready to secure the wire in place. At the control location, install the wire in a zigzag fashion. This holds the cable in place while you continue your work. You can get two and a half inch spacing by counting two and a half tabs on the strap. Don't ever space your wires closer than two inches, which causes overheating. Fill in the first section with wire. In this area, we'll add small sections of strap to fill a gap with warmth. In the case of a circle, cut short lengths and follow the perimeter. Make adjustments to the tab spacing to keep the wires two and a half inches apart. At odd corners near the island, we use hot glue to secure small sections of wire. When you have a door entry, cut the straps to fit the space between the rough opening and then run the heating wires in parallel. If you'd like to add heat to a step area, run the heating element up the riser near the corner. Cut a groove at the corner and secure your wire with hot glue. Measure back several inches and secure your first strap in place. Go to the other end of the tread and secure your other strap. In this case, we're stringing the wire in place between the two straps on two and a half inch centers and then, because we have extra wire, we're leaving the tread by making another cut at the corner and then running down the riser. At the far end of the room, we're running short of wire, so we have to make adjustments. We'll reduce the heated area by eliminating wire in two places where people are unlikely to stand or walk. Then, we'll add two short straps so that our wire will warm a walking path all the way to the entrance. There are many ways to handle excess warm wire, but remember that cutting the wire isn't one of them. When you have extra wire and you need some place to put it, first consider the space near the wall. Next, look for spaces around the toilet. This area is not normally heated, but doing so does no harm as long as you stay away from the wax ring. After the wire is installed, we went back to our control location and made some adjustments. We lowered the profile of the power leads using a hammer and chisel and fixed them in place with hot glue. This makes it easier to install floor coverings later on. Now is a good time to run the cables from the floor to the controller. If the floor plate and joists are exposed, use a 1 and 1 8 inch diameter bit to drill a hole from the top of the floor plate and then through the side. Then use a 7 8 inch diameter bit to drill holes for the sensor. Run conduit from your control box to the holes. Drop two strings from your controller's electrical box to the floor below. Run the electrical supply and finish your drywall. After your warm wire is installed, join your power leads with the string. Pull the string through the wall and retrieve the power leads. If the drywall is already installed, locate the stud, mark its location, and cut a hole for the electrical box. Cut another opening directly below the control location. Feed either the fish tape or a string weighted with a nail down to the hole. Retrieve the end and attach both the power lead and the sensor wires to the string or fish tape. Pull them through the wall and out the top hole. This is much easier to do before installing the electrical box. Notice how the sensor wire runs between the power leads and doesn't come in contact or cross the heating elements. Cut the label off the sensor wire so it doesn't stick up. Draw a line around the nail plate where your power leads go into the wall. Remove a layer of sheetrock. Secure your nail plate in place with screws. This will protect your work against trim carpenters. When you're finished, take more resistance readings.